Welcome to the world's biggest business aviation show. This airplane landed in the middle of desert road in Australia. Are the price coming down? Is it a good time to buy an airplane now? So this is the Honda Jet Echelon. Bem-vindos to the Fina 100 EX. The future aviation. Self-flying, all-electric, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Always pushing the limits. I want to go faster. I want to pull more Gs. I want to make images that people have never seen before. The coolest compliment I ever get is when they watch some of our footage and they go, that can't be real. Getting on board to see the biggest airplane at MBAA base this time, the ACJ220. She's making her MBAA base debut. Let's walk through this extra large private jet with six unique zones. The list price is upwards of 80 million. And it comes with L-shaped sofa, complete blackout window, California king size bed, and fully stand up shower are some of the amazing onboard features I saw. Cockpit wise, it shares the same design and commonality of any A220. The next plane I toured is a Boeing 737-700BBJ with increased gross weight. It is marketed by Avjet Global and currently looking for a buyer. This BBJ has six zones with a great entrance, open kitchen, and a grand hall. Through the private passage, there's a lounge that can convert into a double bed and then a full king-size bed with the ensuite shower. Tell me which one you guys prefer more, the ACJ220 or the 737 BBJ. So thanks for giving me this beautiful tour of this BBJ and I Quite cannot well. believe it. You said this is 2012, but this interior looks brand new still. So this airplane's a 19 passenger uh, configuration airplane. It has a KA band L5 Avance. The cabin management system's been upgraded to uh, Honeywell Ovation. The airplane will be delivered with a fresh 144 month inspection. So right off the gate, this airplane needs nothing compared to all the rest on the market. How's the market doing for such a large Boeing business jet? Has the market peaked? Are we sitting on a cliff because of high interest rate or there's actually still appetite? There's always appetite, Sam. And the answer is you have people that want the comfort of a large cabin airplane that's beyond anything that's out there. And they go to a transport category airplane because you get this. You get the living room feel, you get the, the performance, reliability of a Boeing jet, and it makes all the difference. So there's always a market for them. So behind me here is the Future Aviation. It's also star of the show here. Volocopter, EVTO, electric vertical takeoff and landing uh, vehicle. I saw the demo, it was really cool to see it flying around. I thought it can do a barrel roll during the test flight. You didn't do it. We didn't do it. Um, the, the target of the vehicle is to transport passengers smoothly and safely from A to B. In theoretical terms, we could do that, but we limit the flight control computer system to be as smooth as possible. And so hence, we, we limit all the motions and all the access that the aircraft is physically capable of doing. You know, helicopters, like, you know, just one rotor in the top. You have, right. I don't know, I lost count. And you have so many arms at the top. It's a massive circle at the top. Yeah, you have a great start there. You mentioned helicopter. Helicopter has one single rotor, one single motor or engine. We have 18 that, that just boosts your redundancy in case of a single loss very, very high. That means, in very simple terms, if we lose one or two engines, we can just continue the flight rather than a single engine helicopter. This aircraft has flown on a single interceptor. No foot control, no heave control. One hand is controlling the entire flight control system. I heard you could also fly remotely. You don't have to be Correct. a pilot inside. Correct. We as a company have the beautiful ability to move fast in flight tests. That means we are not exposing our pilots to risk. We are configuring the aircraft in a remote state so we can control it from the ground and push the envelope. How long the battery will last to right. fly vertically? So really important is we're looking at a five-year-old aircraft behind us. The aircraft has been designed and built five years ago and that fast-moving market um, that is considered very old. So the aircraft behind me is able to display a flight time of up to 20 minutes. 
and uh, that equals a distance of up to 15, 16 kilometers. That is not good enough for certification. Our certification aircraft targets 35 minute flight time and up to 20, 18, 20 miles of range. If you look at this and think this is fake, right? But I'm with the air-to-air -air master, Kevin here. And he's showing his equipment and how to shoot the air-to-air. -air. Here, look at this. How else you could get a shot like this, right? Today, you're gonna show us all your tools and secrets, how you make air-to-air -air photography like this. We're gonna show you all the jets, all the camera gimbals, and introduce you to our team. But this is what we love doing. It's what I'll do until I die. I love flying in formation and making beautiful shots of aircraft. We have our entire fleet of motion picture television and OEM special project and airline camera jets and helicopters right here under one roof. So this is very fun for me. This behind me is the Phenom 300 camera jet. This jet was heavily utilized in Top Gun Maverick. I got to fly this to the USS Theodore Roosevelt. I did 11 passes right down to the ramp. On the front of it, we have a shot over F1 rush. This is jam packed with the best lens and best cameras we can put, fully stabilized. But this aircraft doesn't just have one, we have two gimbals on the Phenom 300. There's another gimbal on the back of this aircraft. So I sit up front, with another formation qualified pilot, we each share the responsibility depending on which side the subject aircraft is on. And we have our camera operators in the back seat that are working with us to grab these amazing Im images. One of my favorite platforms, the Airbus H125. This is the most maneuverable and versatile filming helicopter in the world. And on the front of it, we have the shot over K1. This will hold just about any camera package for our aerial DPs. I, I just want to stop you here. Look yeah. at the size of this gimbal. And this camera is bigger than literally the nose of the H125 helicopter. Massive, massive. How expensive this equipment is? Uh, it's about a half million dollars for the gimbal, and that doesn't account for the lens and camera you still have to put in it. So that's just for the gimbal. And how many times zoom with this size of lens? Well, I mean, you could put up to a thousand millimeters in here or more. It just depends on the lens and configuration. One of my favorite jets is the Cinejet. Uh, when I knew I wanted to work on Top Gun Maverick, I remember Tom telling me we needed better technology for filming the movie. And I dreamt up this L39 and I put a shot over on the front of it, and we have created the Cinejet. Tom liked this airplane so much he wanted to fly it, and he got checked out in it. In fact, he signed this airplane right after he got checked out, after we finished the movie. Wow. Something really cool is on the front of this airplane. This is the first time it's ever been out in the public. Right out of New Zealand, this is the Immortal Phoenix Gimbal. This is going to be the fastest and highest G gimbal ever created for jet-to-jet -jet photography. It'll fly on helicopters too, but this system right here is going to give us 450 knots and 5 Gs, meaning it is going to be more capable than the aircraft it's mounted on right now. My dream is always pushing the limits. I want to go faster, I want to pull more Gs, I want to make make images that people have never seen before. The coolest compliment I ever get is when they watch some of our footage and they go, that can't be real, that's fake. We love that. And this piece of equipment right here is going to help us do that. Climbing fast with some fellow aviator and NBA show here and tour pilots, what do you fly here? Uh, I fly the Global Express and helicopters as well. Helicopters and Mindy, yes. what do you fly? I fly everything from tailwheels to citations. Right, I currently fly a single engine prop, but my dream is getting to a single engine jet. Yes. So Honda jet here behind is one of my strong candidates. I really want to fly this one. Do you have any recommendation? Oh, the PC-24, absolutely. PC-24? It lands off airport and dirt strips. And I want to check out the Phenoms. Yeah, so that? today we're going to check out three single pilot airplane. Behind me is the main Swiss airplane PC-24. What really got my attention is two things on this airplane. One is the social media video. This airplane landed in the middle of desert road in Australia. And it landed on grass, it landed on dirt, it landed on dry lake. One other feature I like about it and I think it's really unique for this airplane is that big cargo door behind and there's no other single pilot plane have this. And I'm with the Pilates president here. He's gonna give us more update on the new PC-24. The single biggest uh, demand from our customer, you know, uh, and I've asked my team to listen, listen, 
listen to the customers and the most important thing that they want us to do is to increase payload. So we didn't get them 100 uh, a pound, we have given them 600 pounds of additional payload on the PC24. We worked very hard and we worked uh, four years uh, to improve the aeroplane and improve the payload by 600 pounds, the range by 250 nautical miles. And to do it and achieve that, we have actually changed more than 1,000 parts on that aeroplane. But we also improved the interior of that aircraft. We have a, a 6.5 Divan that is installed in that aircraft, so we can carry nine passengers in that luxurious and quite big cabin. Uh, we changed the entertainment system to a new uh, model, so the, uh, the cabin became a refresh as well. We got to meet a lot of aviators here. I'm with Mar, who flies very cool planes like Kodiak. You fly to, um, you know, landing on the lagoon and outback strip. Amazing footage on Instagram. I know you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Sam, if you could take any airplane here at, at uh, MBAA, mm -hmm. which one would you take? That's actually a really interesting question. I wish I had the power. Um, I would take a single engine uh, turboprop and to build more hours because. You know, I've got about 160 hours in my flight training, but I haven't complete IFR commercial. So I need time building. I need to get up to 250 hours. If I can purchase a single engine airplane, that's going to be cheaper for me and build more hours. More hours means better skills and better experience. Do you agree with that? I wholeheartedly agree. That's exactly what I did when I started to learn to fly as I purchased an airplane and it was a lot cheaper than renting and we actually sold the airplane then about 500 hours later for more than we bought it for. So I think that's a great idea to eventually buy your own airplane. And this is flying. a very tricky area. Yeah, so buying an airplane can be really tricky. Um, there's not only just buying the airplane, you have to have that airplane insured, you have to have the pilots insured, you have to look know what you're looking at for maintenance. You also need to sometimes help with financing. We just talk about the prices, right? During COVID in 2021, everybody came out to buy an airplane. The price went through the roof, right? And I just want to know now, two years later, are the price back to normal? Are the price coming down? Is it a good time to buy an airplane now? Nobody has seen a time in the aircraft market like COVID. Uh, everybody wanted to buy an airplane. Prices went through the roof. Inventory was next to nothing. All the manufacturers here have a backlog for you know, 12, 24, 36 months. And um, so that's been the market for the last couple of years. I think we're slowly starting to see that change a little bit. I only know the single engine turboprop market really well. And what we've been seeing is an uptick in inventory uh, and a slow, a slow downtick in pricing, which means it's coming back to normal. Although I would still say it's a seller's market at at current here in October 2023, uh, but I think we're we're getting to a little bit more of a normal uh, industry uh, over the next 12 months. I'm visiting Honda Jets here now. I've seen this mock-up in two years ago. You guys announced the Honda 2600, which is your super large jets. And uh, give me updates. Whether it's going to be happening on schedule. What's the latest news? So this is the Honda Jet Echelon, and with the name, it's a higher flying, larger aircraft that will be type certified in 2028, and delivery should start in 2029. What we're looking at is an 11 passenger aircraft that will go 2,625 nautical miles, with five on board. It'll fly at a ceiling of 47,000 feet, and it will have a interior a cabin pressure of 6,300 feet. So very comfortable interior uh, for the passengers with cross-country capabilities. So one thing I found very interesting every time I see a Honda Jet is the engine is mounted on top of a wing. And that is really funny. It's not at the back on the tail. It's not underneath the wing. It's on the wing. So is there a certain advantage aerodynamically by having this design? It is, absolutely. And one of the things that Honda discovered with the first Honda Jet was that by mounting the engine on a pylon, you isolate the noise and vibration, which is quieter for passengers in the cabin. And it also eliminates the structural element that runs horizontally, giving you more room inside the fuselage for your enclosed lab and a larger baggage compartment. Bem-vindos to the Fina 100 EX. 
So the Phenom is the best-selling light jet family in the industry. And with the EX, we brought a totally new experience, EX, to this segment. So it has got a new interior, has an open cockpit, so the pilots can interact with, uh, with the passengers. And in the cockpit, the un industry unique runway overrun alert and awareness system, which totally revolutionizes the experience in this entry-level segment. Sam, now we are here with the bigger, broader, the Phenom 300E the best-selling light jet for 11 years in a row, over 750 planes flying worldwide. So the news for the 300E is the auto throttle. I mean, it's pretty much a device that allows the pilot to fly with much less workload, especially because this is a single pilot aircraft. So Sam, you can fly it and we have to find an opportunity for you to do so. I've been waiting for this invitation, right? <laughs> I'm gonna take the Phenom 300 over the Grand Canyon one day. <laughs> I'm at the backstage of the NBA base keynote and I'm waiting to meet the all-time tennis champions Steffi Graf and Andre Agassi. What was your best or craziest aviation experience? I don't know about crazy. My best aviation experience is simple. It's the one you never remember because it's uneventful. I like uneventful when I'm dealing with aviation. Yeah, that's good. It's, Nothing happened is good. <laughs> It's legit. <laughs> when you can forget a trip, you're like, that was perfect. Great. Uh, if you remember a trip, you gotta, you gotta question what went wrong. <laughs> now, the same question to you. What was some of your memorable aviation experience in your life? Allowed to be on an F-14. And uh, that was an incredible experience. I was allowed to be in a formation flight. It was almost an hour. The other pilots, uh, had a bet going at what point, you know, if I would throw up or not. I was allowed to experience pretty strong G's where I couldn't move. Um, I did not throw up. I did not throw up. So we're seeing full of electric cars on the road. And one day, maybe there's full of electric airplanes flying the sky. So I'm here to discover some of the new models. Welcome. What you see here is the WISC 6th generation um, self-flying all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This is the first candidate for FAA certification of an autonomous passenger carrying aircraft. There are 12 rotors on the plane. The, the front row will tilt forward for forward flight and then all 12 will be pointed up for vertical takeoff and landing. How long the range? How far we can fly around the city? Really great question. So what we're working towards for the duration of this aircraft is 90 miles. However, when we look at ground-based traffic, because that's what we're really competing with, is trying to free people from um, their long commutes and save them time. How high you fly? Like, what altitude you will be flying at? Yeah, so this is going to fly around 2,500 up to 4,000 feet. You mentioned this airplane is actually autonomous, right? So I don't sit here and push button like a pilot do. This aircraft is self-flying. However, even though there's not a pilot on board the aircraft, there is always a human that is monitoring and supervising multiple planes um, that are in route from the ground. All routes are pre-programmed. Um, so when you hop on board, your, your route is already programmed. You know where you're going. And so um, the aircraft will automatically take off once it's determined that it's safe to take off and immediately fly to its destination and land. So it's as simple as that. However, as a passenger, if you do need to get in contact with somebody, with a push of a button, you can contact somebody on the ground and you can speak to somebody who's um, accessible for everyone. The bigger question I have is, how much more safety tests you have to prove yourself to be able to get certified? So we have a very robust um, testing program and where we're gonna be sharing data with the FAA. So we're testing the autonomous system thousands of times and it will come together and converge with the aircraft, which is also being test tested um, before this is certified. And so in terms of the number of tests that we need, um, that is a collaborative process that we're going through with the FAA at present. We are saying within this decade, so we're absolutely confident that passengers will be able to hop on board in the next several years. 
It's really the funny shape that caught my eyes, right? And they got the engine in the back, and then they got this stabilizer in the front. It looks like a flying little balls here. I'm gonna go in and check it out. It has a bit more room than the conventional airplane. Well, we're Voltero. We're a startup company from France, based out of Southwest France in the Bordeaux area. And so this right here, you can see, is a, a scale one mock-up of our production aircraft, the Casio 330 which is a hybrid electric aircraft, five-seater, for the regional aviation market. Similar to how a, um, a Toyota Prius operates. So, which means that you can either use the electrical motor to directly drive the propeller, or the piston engine to directly drive the propeller, or both at the same time. We're hoping to start flight testing early next year, and all of next year, all of 2024, will be dedicated to our flight test campaigns. But we do have, however, right now, a flying demonstrator aircraft, which is a proof of concept of our powertrain design, of our hybrid powertrain uh, solution, which is based on a Cessna Skymaster, Cessna 337 Skymaster airframe. But essentially, we retrofitted that aircraft and uh, equipped it with a similar type of hybrid uh, electric powertrain, which will go onto, uh, onto the production aircraft in the future. And that's a wrap for this year's NBA base. I hope you enjoyed the show. See you next year.